Hello, welcome to the Monday, October 4th, 2021 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. As far as offense goes, one big trend these last few years has been living off the land binaries. This typically refers to finding binaries that are installed on systems by default and then using them as part of some malicious action, sometimes for encoding, sometimes for downloading files. Xavier ran to a script that uh, did he find yet another binary that uh, it abused here or used, I should better say, CVT RES? CVT RES is essentially a compiling files. It's meant to convert a resource file to a cough object. That's the common object uh, file format. Typical extension here would be .obj. And then that can be linked uh, to an actual executable. So the goal from a hacker's point of view here is uh, to load a dot rest file, which is uh, not necessarily on your top 10 list of file types to inspect and then convert it on the system itself using CVT rest, which is installed with the .NET framework. And recently we had so many uh, zero days in Google Chrome, meaning vulnerabilities that were exploited before a patch was available that uh, actually I think last week, I have to admit, I missed to mention two of them. So what I recommend is with all of uh, these exploits out there and uh, Google being pretty good in responding to them and keep, keeping Google Chrome up to date, once a day, why don't you just uh, open Google Chrome, type chrome colon slash settings slash help in the URL bar, and that should get you straight to the update dialog. I sometimes find that you have to try twice. The first time you'll get an error message, but the second time it usually applies the update, and that way you sort of shortcut a little bit the automatic update that Google Chrome is doing anyway. Other than that, just at least once a day, close down Google Chrome, start up again. That also may trigger the update. And October is Cybersecurity Awareness Month. Well, if you're listening to this podcast, then probably every month is Cybersecurity Awareness Month for you. And really the targeted audience here is more non-technical. I'll add two links to the show notes it's one for the SAN security awareness uh, training where there are some resources that you may find helpful as well as uh, two prior articles that we wrote on the Internet Storm Center website about the Cybersecurity Awareness Month. So there are some tips and such that you may still find helpful. One neat topic to sort of raise awareness about with non-technical users uh, this month may be the problem of SIM swapping. I find that uh, it's not really well understood uh, in particular for people that aren't sort of familiar with uh, how cell phone systems, how SIMs and such are working. The FCC also has put out a notice that they're looking into regulatory efforts in order uh, to make SIM swapping more uh, difficult. Other countries do have less of a problem with SIM swapping in part because of uh, different regulations and such required to authenticate the uh, consumer requests to, for example, change carriers or uh, change uh, SIM cards that are associated uh, with phone numbers that uh, may hopefully be an avenue how some of this SIM swapping will get at least uh, quite a bit more difficult. And F-Secure did uh, share some additional details regarding CVE 2021-1810. Uh, this was a vulnerability in macOS that allowed the bypass of Gatekeeper. In macOS, if you're downloading a file, macOS sets the com apple quarantine extended attribute. It's very similar uh, to the Windows mark of the web. Essentially, the file is being marked as being downloaded from an untrusted source and the first time you're launching the file you're basically being prompted that uh, you should double check the file and uh, also things like for example code signatures are enforced. 
The problem here apparently was if you're downloading an archived file, like a zip file, and then after you extract the content, the file path is longer than 886 characters. Well, uh, then uh, this extended attribute is no longer included in the file. And as a result, it's treated as a local file and a gatekeeper no longer prompts you with any warnings. So pretty simple uh, vulnerability here. Also pretty easy to exploit, of course. I hope you all have updated. This update has been around for quite a while now. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening. And uh, thanks to everybody who's sort of tweeting about uh, this podcast. Also for uh, leaving any comments on your favorite uh, podcast distribution site. Thanks and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.